Hey there, welcome to Dead End Street. I'm Al. This week again, we are joined with Dr. Byrne, and we are finally getting to that long promised Jesus and Mary Chain album ranking, which we uh, took a little while to do, but here we are. We're ready to go. Uh, Byrne, what's your history with uh, Jesus and Mary Chain? Oh my gosh, I can't even remember when I start listening to Jesus and Mary Chain, but I would say like back when I kind of probably college age I probably uh, probably later than you but that's when I probably start listening to them and just like oh my god like they just knock me off my feet they're just so fantastic and they're one of those bands like I never got out of list like liking them like there's some of those bands right like say Danzig for example I liked them when I liked them but then I probably stopped listening <laughs> to them for a while <laughs> I don't really listen to them until we did our thing together. But uh, yep. Jesus and Mary Chains, like, I'll always come back to them. I'll always listen to something. They're just awesome. And I can't wait to see them in uh, uh, September. Yes, the Furs and Jesus and Mary Chain together. I know. That's going to be great. Big night. Yeah, for me, I guess I've been, um, God, I guess it was, like, right after senior year or, no, it was during senior year. Because I guess, um yeah, and there's 92. So it's kind of how far back I go. Um, kind of been not been really up and down, but I think it's been kind of rejuvenated in the last three or four years just because they've been busy too, kind of bringing attention to themselves. So, um, but yeah, super awesome band. And I'm going to do a little side note here, just an FYI. The, um, the B-sides and compilation b-sides compilation that they did barbed wire kisses had we accounted that that would have been way at the beginning way way up at the top but we're not going to count it because we're going to do the straight studio lps so there's eight studio lps starting with psycho candy in 1985 taking us all the way up to uh the newest glasgow eyes which came out a couple months ago and um i guess you're ready to go i'm ready all right what's your number eight Number eight. Well, first of all, I will say, I don't think they, I personally don't think they have any bad albums. Um, That's true. So I will give that when I'm ranking them as a, I don't think any of them suck. So um, right. the one I would say for eight for me would be Damage and Joy. It is a, a good album. Um, I'm yep. just not in love with it. Um, They do have a couple of really cool songs on there. There's a nice little range from some upbeat stuff to some ballads. Um, I like some of the duets that they have with the female singers. Um, again, good album, but it just didn't stand out to me the way some of the other ones did. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, um, I agree too. There aren't any bad Jesus and Mary Chain albums. They're all really good in their own way. Um, my bottom two are a little bit lower than the rest. Once it gets up to number six, it got really hard to kind of pick which ones I want to go. But so number eight, I'm going with um, Monkey from 1998. Um, I mean, my biggest issue with the record is that it's just way too long. It's like an hour and like 12 minutes or something like that. And that you don't, for the kind of stuff they do, you don't need that much at one time. You know what I mean? Like there are kind of like a three and a half minute, get in there and get out, you know, but when you have 18 tracks of that <laughs> after a while, it starts to get like... But, you know, they, they weren't the only ones. Everybody in the 90s and the late 90s were putting CDs out, were putting way too many songs on there. So they weren't the only ones guilty of that. It's just a thing of the times. Um, but, I mean, the record is, um, it, it's kind of like a little bit of a little bit of each era that they had done up to that point, all mixed up in the one record, which was kind of like a, it's, it's cool. But I kind of like when they kind of commit to one thing and like really like, dig into it um and i think it's obvious that jim and william were kind of on like a different page here they were not like a united front so and i think that's probably why they didn't do another record for almost two decades so uh, but yeah i'm going with monkey num number eight number seven for me um i would kind of i like this album i'm not gonna you know so keep that in mind but i would go with glasgow eyes good album mm -hmm. i love the cover art i think that's really awesome um different than uh, a little they kind of go back to some of those synthy dancey kind of edgy songs 
that J A M C O D song is super catchy. I really like it. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I really like it. I would say not in love next to some things, but I do really like it. And again, some of mine are kind of getting all my middle ones, except the very front the first few kind of um, gel together. So it was kind of hard for me to rank them. My number seven is uh, your number eight, Damage and Joy, mm -hmm. uh, from 2017. This was their big comeback album. They had nothing from 1998 up until 2017. Uh, it was produced by uh, Youth, the bassist from Killing Joke. Um, did a really good job producing the record. Um, I think it's a really great comeback record. Um, I'm a fan of all the songs. I, I, I'm always a fan of when Jim does this duet with a female voice. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but there's something about his voice that blends really well with a, with a female voice. Um, um, and Sky Ferreira, Isabel Campbell, and Bernadette Denning all do great jobs on here. Um, duetting with Jim. I think it's still... It might be a little bit too long still um the record um i think it's more focused than monkey um i think moon mood rider um amputation black black and blues and um the two of us i think are like my my favorite ones on the album and um yeah great album but it's just they have so many other great one so number seven damage and joy um number six i'm gonna go with yours uh, i don't remember if it was your seven or eight but monkey i think yeah. uh, there's certain parts of monkey i do like i will say that I, mean, I have like mixed feelings like there's certain parts of the album i really like and there's certain parts i'm like eh, about um i do think some of it has like that nice dark cd dive bar kind of vibe to it yeah. which i kind of like i feel like from stoned and dethroned they kind of revved up the volume a little bit um again it's a nice mix because they kind of have a couple little like pop, like fizzy kind of little poppy kind of feel i love rock and roll um but it has a, like an angrier edge with a mix and again they have a nice kind of mix with some theme some of the female duets um which mm -hmm. are nice but again there's some songs on there that are a little too industrial almost you're kind of gearing that way which i'm not as big into so um yeah. i like it but it not in the 90s thing everybody was kind of delving everyone in you know, e so. even Glenn Danzig so yes <laughs> another Danzig reference <laughs> awesome all right my number six see I mean, at this point no matter what you put further exactly. down it's going to be somewhat controversial so right um my number six is a great album I loved it when it came out I played it to death it was the um the first record that I experienced in real time meaning I bought it when it was coming out um, and that's uh, Honey's Dead from 1992. Um, I'm listening to it now, as much as I love it and as much as I have like great memories with it. And it's the only one I think of the classic era that sounds a little bit dated. So a little bit. When you first put it on, you can tell from the first track that it's 1992. It just has that sound to it. Whereas the albums before that, I don't think it's that easy to uh defer to but um the first track reverence that's the one i was i was trying to point to that great it, that's a great it song like, it has like yeah it's a great song but it has like that baggy manchester thing going on which is a very early 90s thing but it's great in any way it kind of reminds me of like i want to be i want to be your dog with like put through like an octone baby filter you know what <laughs> i mean um I still love a lot of songs on Almost Gold is one of my all-time favorite Jesus and Mary Chain songs, even to this day. Um, it just reminds me of my my high school graduation because I think it was like right around that time that it was out and uh, just becoming a free man from, <laughs> from <laughs> private high school. Um, yeah, it was kind of a big deal. Um, yeah, I love that song. And I'll be really bent if they don't play it. Um, and that was also the first tour I saw them on. Um, with the Honey's Dead tour. So uh, Tumble Down is another great track on there. Great, great song. Um, but yeah, it's a great album. I mean, if I, on a, four, on a five star scale, it's still a four star album, but just so happens they have that many good albums. So Honey's Dead, number six. 
my number five is Honey's Dead. Um, again, I think it's a great album. Um, less distortions. There's this, like, I think there's like a simplicity to some of the songs. Um, it's still dark at parts. Um, and edgy. Again, I just that whole lyrics of like, I want to die. Just like Jesus Christ is. I don't know. I just think that's so like rock and roll. It's pretty cool. And um, yeah, I think it's a good album. Um, really good album. So uh, I don't really have much bad to say about it. All right, let's go. My number five um, is the newest one, Glasgow Eyes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's a great album. It's a, it's a great unified statement by the brothers. Um, and there's like a common flavor that runs throughout the record, which I really like. I want, that's kind of what I want from my Jesus and Mary Chain records. Um, it's, I love how like they use like that heavy suicide influence on the album or like straight throughout right. um i know it's a huge influence of theirs but it's not something that they've really kind of put in their own records so it's kind of cool to hear them do that um a lot of i love the assorted drum sounds on the record all over the place um very thought out and very deliberate very thoughtful it put a lot of time in i think into the, the drum sounds on this record uh, a lot of new experimentation by william on the guitar sounds um stuff that's like unfamiliar to his repertoire up to this point which is crazy you know still finding new guitar and, and not like lame guitar sounds like nice cool edgy guitar sounds you know that he's still coming up with in his like early to mid 60s you know um but let's i mean venal joy mediterranean x film jma jmamcod discotech silver springs chemical animal second of june all great tracks. I mean, there's so many good tracks in this record. Um, and it, um, it's going to be the album that I look back to 10 years from now when I'm old, <laughs> older. <laughs> and I think of the summer of 24, this will probably be the album that I think of when, because I, that, that's how much time I've spent with it already. Um, but yeah, man, still making great records 40 years into their career. That's so, that's fucking awesome. It really is. Great album. Last Go Eyes. Four yeah, again, here. these are all kind of tough for me to kind of figure which one, but I guess I would go with automatic for that one. Again, I like mm -hmm. it. Um, again, from Darklands, they start to change the sound up a little bit more. It's more synthy, edgy, something you maybe could hear in the clubs. Um, I have a couple songs on there that I really, really like. Um, you know, head on, halfway to crazy. I think they're great songs, they're kind of a little bit mixed. Um, a couple songs maybe have a little too much synthy industrial-ish flair for my taste, but still overall a great album. Yeah, that's my number four, Automatic. Um, this was the, uh, when I got into them, this was the the album that was currently out. So um, this was not the first one I bought by, but this was the current album that was out. So it was around 89 or 90, I guess. Um, it seems like it seems silly though like when this came out they got a major backlash from this album i know um, because it was such a left turn from dark lands that it was kind of like a straight rock album with like a little bit of dance beats which is so much different than the first two um but to think about that now listening to it now it just seems silly because it's um because it, it's a great record and i guess um over the years i think it's been reevaluated by critics and fans and stuff and by you know just by the passage of time itself, I think it's looked upon more favorably as it should be. Um, but there's tons of classics on here. I mean, obviously, Head On is probably one of my top four or five Jesus and Mary Shane songs. Um, and I know the Pixies redid it, and I know a lot of people like the Pixies version. But honest, truthfully to me, it doesn't touch it. Uh, it's a Jesus and Mary Chain song, and that's just how I feel. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so Head On, Her Way of Praying, Blues from a Gun, great song. Mm -hmm. uh, Here Comes Alice, so many great songs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do, I did, probably would go ahead and say this is probably the most fun of all the Mary Chain records. Right. I mean, there's no real downers, there's no real anger, it's just <laughs> turn it on, turn it up to 10, and it's just Sounds great. And it's another album, a great album that sounds great at one o'clock in the morning when you get back from the bar, you know? So yeah, automatic number four. All right. Now we're on the top three. Uh, top, my third would be Stoned and Dethroned. 
great album. It's the acoustic album. It's great. They do some fantastic duets um, with the Hope from Mazzy Star, who I love yeah. Mazzy Star. Mm -hmm. um, they do some fantastic songs. Sometimes Always is one of my favorites. Um, some other great ones. Come On is a fantastic song. Save Me. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great song. It kind of reminds me of an album, like if you're on a really long road trip on, like when I'm going out to sheeps on open fields, yeah. <laughs> looking at corn stalks or something, you know, in the back of the dog, in the back of the Jeep, you'd be listening to Stone and D3. Totally agree. Totally but agree. Yeah, great, great album. Yep, yep. Well, we'll get to that later for me because my number three is going to be Psycho Candy. Um, yeah, I mean, I know this is like the iconic Jesus and Mary Chain record. It's one of the greatest debuts of all time. Um, it's when you do those hundred hundred greatest albums of all time lists. It's always somewhere on there. Um, it's got one of the most iconic openings to any record of all time with that do do do. You know, with um, just like honey. Um, but to me, but listening to this album, and this is one I just noticed during this exercise that I tried listening to it with earbuds and headphones. Then I, then I, I took my head, ear, earbuds out because I just it didn't sound right. So I put my record on, and I realized that Psycho Candy is a record that needs to be set listened to out in the air. It needs to be open in the room and be lived in, like in the space. I feel like when you listen to it with earphones or earbuds, you're missing a lot of what's going on in the recording, at least to me, because it's so vast and so open that when I listen to it with ear, earbuds or earphones, I feel like I'm missing half of the mood. But um, but I feel that way about a lot of music. I like listening to it out in the open, in the air. Um, and I know this record, it blew people's minds when it came out because it was so different. You know, the whole Velvet Underground meets Beach Boys thing meets the Ramones, you know, it's just very original and it's been copied a gazillion times. Um, make no mistake, I love this record. Um, the guitar tones on this record are absolutely insane. Williams guitar tones are one of the greatest uh, and most unique guitar sounds ever. The first time you hear it, you're like, what the fuck am I listening to, you know? Um, it takes a couple of listens to get it, and then you go, I got it. Now I get it, you know. Um, but I feel like I mean, all the best records are that way. Like, the best records are the ones that grow on you. You know what I mean? They they pique your interest at first, and then you, have, you feel like you need to go back and hear it again, because you're like, what was that? And the more you listen to it, the more you grow, and then you just grow, you grow to love it. Um, but then I feel that's just one of those records. Um, and what's crazy, the, I think the craziest part of this record is I think is that they self-produced like these yeah. young dudes who were like, what were they, 23, 24, if that? I'm not even sure they were that old. I'd have to look, but they produced it themselves hmm. and they got that sound, that, that iconic Psycho Candy sound just by doing it themselves. And it's crazy that the label allowed them to do it. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, core, apart from like uh, just like honey and you know all the singles i think something was wrong is one of my favorite all-time uh jesus and mary chain tracks i think it's absolutely stunning i know it's like the longest song in the album at a whopping four minutes but <laughs> yeah it's a great great track psycho candy number three number two psycho candy uh i agree with you though i will say al about the one uh about where you listen to it makes a difference because i know if i listen to that in the jeep there's a little bit of like some um just like the sound you get a little bit of that sound thing from the sound's not the same versus if i li listen to it in the house like on the speakers i don't listen yeah. to vinyl or anything but um the, it does sound better because the, the some of the like this the, the music part of it so to speak you kind of have to like um really listen to it so i i agree with that to really get a feel for it and i mean yeah for a debut album they absolutely knocked it out of the park um but the one thing i like i think is like some bands like when they do like those like distortions and stuff they kind of go overboard and it yeah. kind of loses it and you're kind of eh, you know and i just mm. They do it just perfect. Like it's just yep. enough with the voice and the and the distortions to just like pull, pull you in. 
Um, it's really like unpretentious. It's rocky. It's dark. It's everything. It's uh, rough. It's fast. It's, you know, the, uh, what is it? The one, the motorcycle riding song I absolutely love. Um, <laughs> yeah. Them, Taste, uh, yeah. Taste the floor. <laughs> Just some, of course, just like honey, um, nice mix, but just, um, wow, just, a, yeah, great, great album. Yep, iconic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my number two is Stoned and Dethroned. Um, now, when I was young, I've always loved the album, but I think that as I've gotten older, I've grown, got a, I've grown to have an even bigger appreciation for it. And to my ears, it just, it's just perfect. Um, I love the vulner, vulnerability of it. I love the honesty. I love the complete left turn from the bombastic nature of Honey's Dead. Um, and a complete 180 from Psycho Candy. I mean, they just stripped it down to the bare... You know, it's like exile Main Street kind of rock. You know what I mean? It's like straight rock, but it's still them. But it's still them, and it's still unmistakably them. And it's still their sound, and you know it's them right away, even though it's acoustic. But it's just a great record. Um, and like you said, when when I I when I listen to it, uh, well, perfect. Let me go back up here. I looked this up. This record, I don't know if this is true or not. But this record only sold 121,000 copies. Really? I that's shocking. Wow. So, that I don't know if that's true, but if someone in the comments could verify that for me, I mean that is just insanity to me. Well, we're uh, we're we're encouraging people to go and listen to it because it's so good. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you don't have all these albums, and if you have only one or two, then you you you'll love all the rest of them. But I'd like you said we're saying like I think I think it's universally agreed on that when you listen to this, it's it's the one of the greatest road records yeah. of all time. I mean, and the funny thing is, um, is that when I got okay, so I think this came out. I want to say like I have to look up the date, but I'm willing to bet that it came out the end of summer '94, somewhere in like beginning of August late august of 94 I, I know it's 94 but i'm I, i'm pretty sure it's around there because i remember um making a dub copy for my cd for the car and a friend of mine and me and a friend of mine took a road trip down the jersey shore at around like four in the morning and as the sun was coming up coming down the um down uh the ac expressway and coming down into, I guess it was like probably Wildwood back then, New Jersey. But the sun, just remember watching the sun coming up as we're coming up over the bridge and just listening to this album. Um, yeah, man, it's one of the greatest road records of all time. And um, I think the track Hole, it's going to be, that would be in my top 10 of all time. Mary Chain tracks, great track. Um it just has a great subterranean exile on Main Street type feel to it, you know. Um, a couple of the great, a couple of uh, great appearances by Hope Sandoval, like you said. I mean, she okay. really, him and her and Jim really knock it out of the park. Yeah. I mean, on this album, they really do. And, you know, having a guest experience, uh, appearance from Shane McGowan, never going to hurt. I think this is just a crazy overlooked album in their discography because you don't ever see it on like those best of like album right. listings like you'll you'll see like a couple of the early records in there but they just kind of no one but i guess when only 221,000 people bought it i guess you know but it's crazy to me i just like i think it's a great great album um i have a frank tired and psycho candy for christ's sake so yeah, I'm, <laughs> I really love it. Uh, Stones and Dethroned, number two. I can't believe we have the same number one. I I had a feeling we were going to have the same number <laughs> one. Yeah. I, yeah. So, no, Darklands, number one. I yeah. love everything about this album. Oh my gosh! First of all, big change from Psycho Candy. Um, not as many distortions. Obviously, they have the drum machines, but I think they're done well. Um, it's dark. It's brooding. It's 
um wow they have and then it's a mix like they have these like more kind of dark melodic songs dark lands is a fantastic song then they kind of get that rock edgy songs like i love april skies that's a great song then they kind of go into that like happy when it's rain that kind of postmodern rock sort of feel it's just just great um I don't know. I just love everything about Darklands. And I can even listen to that one in the car too, because that one I can still like, wow. Um, but that's just I, everything about when I was, when I listen to Jesus, Mary Chain and think about them, like those songs from Darklands just stand out to me. And I can, I never don't like them. They're just, just great. Yep. 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 My number one, I agree. Darklands. Um, I mean, it still has a bit of the abrasiveness from Psycho Candy, but it's just, it's, I, I think as, as revolutionary as Psycho Candy was, I don't think they had reached their, their peak of songwriting yet. Um, and I think this is where they learned their songwriting craft. Um, I mean, there's some fantastic melodies, beautifully layered guitars uh, the addition of more acoustic guitars to go along with the really fuzzed out guitars just gives it a, um, a really nice a t um, approachable feel in a way without coming off cheesy mm -hmm. um, somehow the songs on dark lands come out sounding darker than psycho candy mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that there's a clearer more crystal clean production style um but yeah this is i think this is the first album of theirs that i bought um i don't think that that plays that much of a um influence on my pick but i think you know i do have a lot of nostalgia with the record um because it was at a time when i was just opening up to my my musical eyes to like super exciting things it was just one of the all these albums were coming at me at the same time i was like i was like pac-man eating them all up you know um but i played the shit out of this um it was so different than anything i really heard up until that point i mean yeah there was a little bit of you could hear a little bit of new order in there you can hear a little bit of ramones in there but so definitely their own thing um and I don't think at this point that I'd even really even heard the Velvet Underground or the Stooges yet. But through Jesus and Mary Chain, I would be, my interest would be piqued to go find those bands, which is a lot of times what happened with a lot of my favorite bands. One band would be influenced by them and I'd go, wow, I really like what they're doing. So I must really like what got them to do it, you know, so. But um, yeah, it's raucous in spots. It's tender in spots. It's seedy. It's introspective. It's infinitely cool, and um, I'll always love it. And dark there's a theme. Day. Everything's dark and rainy. There's lots and lots of rain everywhere in that song and darkness. <laughs> it's the perfect length. It's like a thirty-five or forty-minute record. Mm -hmm. Every song is four minutes or less, if I'm not mistaken. I'll double check that, but they're right around there. Honest to God, you could have made it. Every one of these songs on this album could have been a single. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every single one. Um, and I don't think it would have changed the uh, way the album was remembered in one way or the other. Um, so I'm fully expecting to hear Happy When It Rains and Dark Lands and April Skies and all that stuff. It better play it in September when we were yeah. there. Yes, but I'd really like to hear some of the new album, too, because I really like it. So if you like what you've been watching, press like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Um, we did we, we have an album, this Albums of the Year series going on. We started out with 79. We are now up to 84. The best, the top 25 albums 1984 was posted, I think, like a week ago or two weeks ago. You can check that out. You can check out all the other ones before that. We have a bunch of other album rankings on here. Um, and, um, see you next time in dead end street. Thanks guys. See Bye. You.